Well, three other senators also figure strongly in the RCMP documents. And while investigators do not allege they broke any laws, they do question their version of events. Diana Swain picks up that part of the story for us. Diana. Well, Peter, the Senate is supposed to be independent, but the RCMP clearly believes the PMO successfully pressured senators into manipulating the review of Duffy's expenses and into keeping that hidden from Canadians. Now their names are well known. Senators Marjorie LeBreton, David Tkachuk, and Carolyn Stewart Olson, all conservatives. LeBreton was the government leader in the Senate. Tkachuk and Stewart Olson were members of the Internal Economy Subcommittee looking at Mike Duffy's expenses. They have previously denied they helped whitewash the committee's final report. Did they ask think, you to change anything in the report? Uh, not, no, the report is as we, as we produced it. The RCMP clearly believes otherwise. It says the original draft was highly critical of Duffy. Police allege that criticism broke a deal he reached with the PMO to have his good name maintained if he found a way to pay back the money. And so, according to the RCMP, the harshly worded original posed a problem for the PMO, who in turn influenced Senators Tkachuk, Stuart Olson and LeBreton to change the report to reflect wording that the PMO wanted. That wording removed all criticism of Senator Duffy. But when police interviewed her, Stuart Olson maintained no one gave her direction or orders to change the Senate report. The takeaway for police? That Senator Stuart Olson's version of events to police was incomplete and not consistent with the facts. She and Senator Tkachuk, being the committee majority, imposed their will and the will of the PMO on the Senate report. I never believed that Mike Duffy should have the same report as the other two because as far as I was concerned, he paid his money back. That was a big difference, not knowing what was going on in the PMO at the time. Stuart Olson says much the same. But it wasn't just the Senate report. The RCMP alleges Duffy also wanted the Deloitte audit quashed. When he revealed that part of the deal during his dramatic Senate speeches, LeBreton stood in reply and said she knew nothing about it. This is not true. This is false. But the RCMP alleges the evidence shows there was a plan to have Senator Duffy withdrawn from the Deloitte audit if he repaid. And the emails show Senator LeBreton was aware of it. I'm sorry if they don't believe. I, I answered all their questions honestly and, uh, and I, uh, I conducted myself properly throughout the whole process. All of this predictable fodder for the opposition. The Senate was being run out of the Prime Minister's office. We know that. It's a Prime Minister's office like no other in the history of Canada. The Prime Minister's spokesperson dismissed that. What I can tell you is what we've seen in, in the document. RCMP's made it clear they're investigating two people for this, Mr. Wright and Mr. Duffy, period. Peter, it's important to note that all of these allegations contained in this report are in fact still just that. None of this has been tested in court and no one has been charged. Lots in those documents, Diana. Anything else we should know about? They certainly make clear that there were some Senate staff who were openly alarmed, Peter, by what they saw happening. And one in particular, Christopher Montgomery, emerges as something of a white knight, telling police he was worried and told senators he thought they were compromising themselves by agreeing to change the report. And in fact, he says in his seven years working here in the Senate, he could not before recall a time when PMO staff were sitting in on Senate meetings or insisting on specific wording in a report. And he says he told them he didn't think they should be there, but they did not leave. He now works in the private sector in Alberta, Peter. All right, Diana, thank you. Diana Swain on Parliament Hill tonight. Well, our National Affairs Editor, Chris Hall, is here as well. He's in our bureau in Ottawa. Chris, what is... Uh... What does all this say about the lengths to which the PMO tried to manage the Duffy issue? Well, it's extraordinary, Peter. It's like the Senate was a branch plant of the Prime Minister's office. Not only did they try to dictate a watering down of the report, but as Diana pointed out, only one Senate aide said it would compromise the senators, and it doesn't end there. Senator Irving Gerstein, who's the head of the PC, or the Conservatives' fundraising arm, was asked by Nigel Wright to intervene with Deloitte's, the auditors, because they also look after the Conservatives' books. And we also heard potential of the party paying back Mike Duffy's expenses. So in the end, 
Nigel Wright paid, uh, paid that money back himself, as we know, and far more people knew about that inside the prime minister's office, uh, inside the Senate, and even inside the party itself, Peter. What's next for the prime minister now? Well, he's in a really awkward spot. He either was deliberately kept out of the loop by his most trusted advisors, which is not really consistent with his, his image of being a micromanager, uh, or he was completely uninterested in how this terrible problem, political problem, was being dealt with. You know, this is our first peek inside the hundreds of pages of emails that Wright and the others sent to each other as they fumbled around from as early as February to try and deal with the Mike Duffy affair. And as we heard in, in Terry's piece, you know, uh, Nigel Wright was, uh, was saying he did inform in broad terms of Prime Minister, although we don't know when that was or what in the end was said. What stood out for me, Peter? A February 6th email from Nigel Wright where he warns others in the PMO, this is going to end badly. At least on that score, he appears to be right. There's a potential for criminal charges now and obviously the potential for a trial. I'll say. Thanks, Chris. Chris Hall in Ottawa. And if you're wondering why all this information suddenly came out, the RCMP filed what's called an Information to Obtain a Production Order, or ITO. It's basically an affidavit to back up a police request for court approval to get further documents and data from parties under investigation. They become public once they are filed.